The most common errors pilots make when landing are bad altitude and airspeed control, bad height estimation, floating, ballooning, bounces with hard landings, landings without crosswind corrections, and ground looping. The easiest solution to any unsafe landing is a go around. To do this, we increase the throttle smoothly to maximum takeoff power and we pitch for a climb. Once we have a positive rate of climb, we bring the gear up and then we maintain a positive rate of climb as we bring the flaps up in increments. We can then tell ATC and rejoin the traffic pattern. Before we look at all these errors, we'll first look at what a go around is. So in final approach, I'm going to execute a go around. To do this, I'm aborting the landing, so I increase maximum takeoff power and pitch for a climb. Once I have a positive rate of climb, I'll then retract the landing gear, maintain the positive rate of climb and begin retracting the flaps and in increments. During this time, I'm maintaining my airspeed and I'm also maintaining a positive rate of climb. Bring up another notch of flaps, maintain that positive rate, maintain airspeed, another notch of flaps. After attracting any remaining flaps with a positive rate of climb, the go around is complete and you can rejoin the pattern. Bad airspeed and altitude control is often a big problem. You rectify this by using the point and power technique and being able to recognize if you're high, low or on glide path. As you can see, if you're low, then the runway looks short and fat, but if you're high, the runway looks long and skinny. By making the proper adjustments, you make the runway look like the middle picture. Another option, if you are high, is the forward slip. Another major error results from bad height estimation. This occurs when you stare at a single point on the runway. If you stare too close, the speed will blur your vision and you will round out too high. If you're staring too far away, you lose your high perception and you end up rounding out too low. To fix this, you should be visually scanning an area of about 10 to 15 degrees angle from the airplane. And just before you hit your aiming point, you begin the round out. As you lose sight of the runway, then you use your peripheral vision of the runway edges and horizon height to gauge your descent rate and altitude. Now we'll look at the various errors and the fixes involved with landings. Coming in on final approach at half speed, I've labelled the scanning area here. This is approximately the area you're going to be scanning during your approach in order to allow a good height estimation coming into the aiming point. Now before we hit the aiming point we begin the round out and level the plane off. Now as we look straight ahead we use our peripheral vision to monitor the horizon and runway edges. If the horizon goes up then we're descending and we need to begin raising the nose to reduce our rate of descent. If the horizon goes down, then we've flared too much and we're climbing. Your landing attitude like this is exactly the same as what you will see when the aircraft is sitting on the ground, so it's important for you to memorize this sight picture. Rounding out too low is a result of scanning too far ahead of where you're supposed to be. So if you keep your eyes in that spot, you'll notice that it's difficult to see the close runway approaching until it's too late. As you're coming in and you round out too high, that sort of means you're looking too close to the airplane or out the side of it, or you're just flat out misjudging the height you should be. This is also an issue because you're going to end up doing a drop in landing, where you're at a three point position but you're too high, so you strike the runway with a high descent rate, possibly causing structural damage. Now we're going to do the high round out again, but this time we're going to fix it. So let's say you come in, you begin the round out too early and you end up high. You relax the back pressure, allow the plane to continue to descend. Then you bring the plane to a three point attitude and you add power as needed to help lower your descent rate for a softer touchdown. Now floating is caused by an excessive speed on final. So in this case, as we come in towards the runway and our aiming point, We'll reduce the power to idle and round out as normal, but the problem is, because we have so much airspeed and we're in ground effect, we won't be able to slow down very fast, so we'll float along for a long time down the runway. So what you're doing is essentially holding the round out phase for a much longer period of time, until we start slowing it down enough where we can get to our three point attitude and touch down.
But now the next problem is ballooning. This occurs when you round out and then begin flaring at an airspeed that's too fast. With the higher angle of attack and more airspeed you end up putting it into a climb. But this poses a problem because then you end up at a slow airspeed at a higher altitude. And without proper changes you end up in some big trouble. So to fix ballooning you have to recognize that this is happening. And you can tell this because the horizon is going down. This tells you that you're climbing. So we hit the round out, we flare too much, see the horizon going down, and we need to fix it by relaxing the back pressure, letting the plane descend, and adding some power to help reduce our descent rate. The action for this is very similar to when you're high on a round out. Now bouncing usually occurs when you have a high descent rate at touchdown, or if you're applying back pressure at touchdown to reduce the descent rate. And if you act quickly, you can fix it. So as we strike, we don't want to climb too high, get the plane re-established back into a three-point attitude, add some power, and then touch down. The ground loop is what happens when you lose directional control due to overcorrecting with the rudder. This excess rudder input creates momentum, which will cause the tail to spin around the nodes if you don't fix it. So in this example, we landed left of center line. Right rudder is applied to fix it, but it's too much, creating momentum that will spin the aircraft and cause the wing on the outside of the loop to hit the ground a prop strike, or worse. Now we're in the same scenario, left of center line, and I'm going to put the plane into a right ground loop and overcorrect to the left. So we apply right rudder, bring the plane to the right. Now I'd naturally counter this with left rudder, but I'm going to overcorrect, causing the plane to ground loop to the left. So when you recognize this, you're going to have to apply aileron to the inside wing, and this helps keep the outside wing up 